I'm making an appeal to all maintainers of Linux distributions that have Hyperland pre-installed, but not only. Please, I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you. Document those damn keyboard combinations you've customized. Anyone using your desktop needs to know how to close a window, how to launch the application menu, how to open a terminal, how to access the file manager, some other basic commands. For God's sake, can't you understand this concept? Can't you understand that if you change the combination to close a window, which is usually super Q, I have to start trying all possible combinations and it becomes impossible. And maybe I type the one for logout and then I can't log back in because I don't know your damn password, which isn't root, nor live, nor demo, nor the distribution name, nor 0000, nor I don't know what. Yes, these are the events of how Utux lost his mind with Nitrux OS. A distribution not for everyone, but then for whom? If not only for the developer who created it. Key bindings are not documented. This is unacceptable. If you customize Super Plus Q to close windows with something else, you must say so. It's not a matter of being noob or pro, it's basic UX. Live password is unknown. This is 100% absurd. Live ISOs must have public and documented passwords. It's a de facto standard throughout the entire Linux world. If Calamares doesn't start and you have to launch it manually, you must be able to access it as root. 7 GB partition as default with a persistent live installation, completely inadequate for a distro based on Flatpak and app image. KDE InLive plus Firefox fill that space immediately. The installer should at least warn clearly. The documentation isn't really missing, it exists, but it's buried inside the website like a blog post, hardly accessible, and not presented as proper user documentation. In fact, I only figured out how to reach it on my second attempt. This isn't just a shortcoming, it's a total block. An operating system that defines itself as ready to use cannot afford to have the user trapped at minute zero with no way out. Yes, I know, I'm a so-called advanced user, I open the terminal and open with nano. Actually, no, you don't use nano. I search online which editor you use, and I open the configuration file and waste an hour interpreting it to understand the commands. Then I install the distribution. Here I reboot, and I notice that the applications I had installed in the previous session, not done from live, have disappeared. And what do I notice? It's a permanent live session installed on a 7 gigabyte home partition. An installer must be transparent. Every choice must be explicit, explained, and clear. No user should discover after installation that they're using a persistent live with 7 gigabytes. This is not a technical detail. It's a violation of user expectations. On a distro that only uses Flatpak and AppImage and that after installing KDE InLive and Firefox practically doesn't allow the installation of anything else because the space has run out. But is this such a difficult concept to understand? Is it really so complex for you? Those who create a distribution and release it publicly do it to make it accessible to others, right? You can't not have the mental openness to understand that users don't know your customized key combinations, let alone the password you've set, and that might be needed when something goes wrong. What should you do? Create an overlay or splash screen on first boot with the basic combinations. Put a clearly visible readme file on the desktop with essential commands. Include a PDF cheat sheet in the user's home with the main key bindings. It's not difficult. It takes just a few hours of work. I'd also like to see the most essential information presented clearly and accessibly on your website. I'm not asking for arch-level encyclopedic documentation, but at least a properly structured site with clear sections, visible categories, and intuitive navigation. This is a fundamental part of usability, and it applies to every project, even giants like Debian. It's important. It's fundamental. When you distribute a distribution, you're addressing an audience. People from all over the world can download it. It's something serious. A getting started page must include at least super plus something to open the launcher, super plus something to close a window, super plus something to open the terminal, Super plus something for the file manager, how to change workspaces, which package manager you use, and whether the user should expect Flatpak, app image, or other. And above all, and this is not just a Nitrux problem, you must make the passwords of live versions public. It's a fundamental right of whoever downloads your ISO to know them.
It's like if I edited my videos in fragments. It's a question of education towards those who download your software, use it, and try to get something good from it. When someone installs your distro, they're investing their time. They're saying, I trust you. I want to try what you've created. The least you can do is give them the tools to use it. Sorry for the umpteenth rant of my distro hopping frustration, but sometimes I have positive feelings, like with big Linux, and sometimes negative impressions. Take the case of Nitrux OS. And mind you, the distribution is quite interesting. The distribution is truly interesting. I repeat, whoever created it has brains, but gets lost in a simple glass of water. I wanted to give it another chance, so much so that I installed the Mesa version more suitable for my hardware, even though Liquorix was working the same. But I also have to admit that I had missed the fact that this distribution uses a partitioning scheme very different from all other distros, and that this is actually written in the installation manual. Of course, an information this important, and so different from the usual installation process, probably deserved a much more visible note, and maybe even a small Calamares hint or warning. If I may offer a suggestion, that would really help. I said to myself, come on, let's forget everything that happened. And I swear to you, and you know I'm honest, I was already thinking of a positive review of this distro. So I boot the live of the Mesa version, and for God's sake, the installer doesn't start. <laughs> so I look for the Calamares binary to launch it manually, but it asks me for the root password. Now, a normal person making a Linux distro does put a root password, obviously, and generally it falls among the combinations that are easily traceable to those with some experience. The distro name, root, live demo, simple enter, a simple zero, a combination of four zeros. But no, nothing at all. The password is a maintainer's secret. Only he can install Nitrux OS. Too bad it seemed like a project that truly deserves to be tried original with some concepts I really like. Nitrux OS is based on Debian but uses the XFS file system, doesn't use systemd but openrc, and tries to have optimal basic security by offering by choice only containerized applications with Flatpak and app image. I believe they also have AppArmor enabled by default. As for the desktop environment, Hyperland is there, with Crystal Clear as dock, Waybar as top bar, and presents a default configuration that's all in all acceptable. In short, it's a nice distro, interesting, with precise and reasoned technical choices. If only it were easy to use. But for God's sake, I spent an entire evening trying to find basic combinations to move between desktops, close windows, open applications. I went all over their website to figure out that they use Flatpak and AppImage and to know that damn root password and that they have a dedicated package manager for these. Information that should be on the front page, clear, immediate. Instead, no, you have to dig, search, try, bang your head against the wall for hours. Communication is important. It's not optional. It's not, it would be nice to have it. It's fundamental for the success of a distribution. And Nitrux OS is the perfect example of this paradox. They made courageous and intelligent technical choices. They created a system with Hyperland configured decently with a performant file system like XFS, with an alternative init system like OpenRC, with a serious approach to security based on containerization and probably app armor. They did all this enormous work. They invested time, passion, technical competence, and then they don't tell you how to use it. It's like building a Ferrari and not giving you the keys, or worse, giving them to you but not telling you where the ignition is. You can have the best desktop environment, the best performance, the most updated packages, the most innovative features, the most solid security choices. But if the user can't even close a window in the first five minutes, they'll never go discover all these wonders. They'll never discover that behind it there's XFS. They'll never appreciate the lightness of OpenRC compared to SystemD. They'll never understand the value of app containerization. Why? Because they're stuck at the initial screen without knowing how to do literally anything. To maintainers, I understand that configuring everything requires time and passion. I appreciate your work. But I ask you, dedicate even just one hour to create basic documentation of the key bindings. Not for you, you already know them. For those who come after you. For those who trust your project and want to give it a chance. It's respect, it's professionalism, 
It's the difference between a distribution that dies in oblivion and one that grows thanks to its community. For those who manage to access a terminal, Hyperland key bindings are generally found in .config slash hyper slash hyperland.conf in the home. But, and this is the point, you shouldn't have to look for them. They should give them to you immediately, clear, documented, accessible. It's not about being experts. The difference between a professional and a beginner is zero when it comes to guessing an unknown password. And believe me, I really tried everything. I won't even list all the combinations I attempted. This is a constructive appeal born from frustration, but also from love for Linux and for the work you do. Let's make the Linux world more accessible, one readme at a time. To the maintainer of Nitrux OS, I want to say something with absolute sincerity. I like your work. I like the ideas, I like the technical choices, and I would have liked to install your distribution on my hard disk and try it for a couple of weeks. It wasn't my fault that I couldn't do it, and don't think for a second that I'm not capable. I've installed everything, even the most improbable distros found in the worst bars in Caracas. But yours today is truly inaccessible. And if you think this inaccessibility makes your distro special, you're dead wrong. Your distro is technically very valid, and that's exactly what makes everything even more frustrating. It's not the project that's weak, it's the documentation that's terrible, and it's the communication that's non-existent. I would have liked to say that Nitrux OS is a difficult distro like many others that I, by the way, love. But no, it's not difficult. It's simply inaccessible. A project that, as of today, remains more on paper, in online screenshots, and inside your hard disk than in the hands of users who would really like to try it. Too bad. I truly hope that in the next version you'll make it so that it's not just you and two of your friends who know the root password who can install it, but all of us. Users deserve respect, they deserve transparency, they deserve the basic information to use what you've created. Thank you.